podcast one first? Yep. Something we talked about for a long time. Actually, I think it started because we had personal friends. Welcome to the freaking show. Uh, we had personal friends. Um, I had a whole rant. I have a lot of issues. We've established that. Let's slow this down. Sorry, boys and girls. Sorry, boys and girl. I got a lot of issues. My mind is like the Tesla in hyperdrive or whatever that thing is. That ludicrous mode? Ludicrous. My mind is ludicrous mode, except ludicrous mode only lasts like three seconds in your full tank. My tank doesn't get empty, and I my brain works on ludicrous mode. If I were a genius, I don't think I'm dumb, but I'm, maybe I'm average, maybe I'm slightly You above. wouldn't be here with me if I thought you were dumb. So. But but if I was an actual genius and I had my ludicrous brain, I probably we'd be on Mars by now. You know, like if I had Elon Musk's uh, yeah. intelligence with my ludicrous brain, I do so much thinking. Uh, we'd be, I don't know. I don't know what we'd be doing, but it would be highly m- more advanced than we are right now. The issue is that I'm not smart enough. But my brain functions at, at an incredible rate. Uh, when I, I'm driving to the, uh, so I had a long morning. Uh, mom had minor surgery. I had to go pick up this stupid rototiller that I got to do some landscape tomorrow. I have a company coming soon. We had our ad read. We had a call. We had a bunch of stuff here. Uh, just my mind's already going. So I have 10 minutes from when I pick up this rototiller till I get to the podcast studio where my mind is thinking uh, then about the show. Obviously, on a typical 50% facts, we don't do a lot of research, and that's kind of the goal of the show. Um, these two shows that me and Jim are doing our first solos, I think, uh, besides a Game of Thrones one, uh, are going to be slightly different. We're still going to try to uh, get up to a point and help you guys out, um, but it's a little bit more old school, a little bit more casual. And uh, we are the experts for today, so you can call me Professor Mike for the day. There you go. So I was thinking 10 minutes of what I'm going to talk about on this topic. And I wanted to, and the topic of the day is how to start a podcast, how to have a successful podcast, or potentially stretch that out a little bit and how to potentially, you know, build your own career business uh, in this space, YouTube, podcast, whatever. This topic came up. Probably what we've been podcasting seven years. We just, someone just asked us, I think we've known each other nine years. I think I walked into the gym in 2011 or 12, maybe the very beginning of 2012. So it's about about to be 2020. Uh, So there's eight years podcasting, six and a half ish. Well, yeah, something like that. Right? Six. Yeah. Uh, A lot of hours spent together. A lot of people started asking us probably five years ago. how to podcast, should I podcast, why should mm-hmm. I podcast? And I still get it today. I've probably had three different friends ask me about Twitch and podcasting in the last three months uh, and like mini interview me or whatever. Podcasting, this lifestyle, YouTube, is not for everyone. No, that's for sure. So me and Jim are not... I'm trying to think of someone amazing. <laughs> We're not Vince Vaughn. Uh-huh. Who I th- Will Ferrell. We're not even Theo Vaughn. Theo Vaughn's really good. Vince Vaughn, I don't know why, I don't know him as a human, but as a character, he's just insanely charismatic. Yeah. I don't know why I can't think. Uh, Muhammad Ali? Yeah, no. We're not Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Some of these guys are so insanely charismatic. Do we have some of that in us? I think both of us do. Are we pretty good at speaking? I think both of us are. Um, And so we have some talents that line up well with this podcast deal. A lot of it, here's humble Mike, for me, uh, is luck. Yeah. Uh, we, We started a fitness podcast. And a good fitness podcast that was highly entertaining. and At, at we, the right time. At the right time. Um, do I think if we started one right now, would it still be successful? Yes, because I do think we have the recipe for that. We have the brain for that. We have the network for that. We have the knowledge and the history. Uh, and I could say the same for my YouTube. Did I start it at the right time to make it successful? And, and both our YouTubes and other YouTubes mm-hmm. we helped work on, probably it was really good timing, plus collaborations and friends, et cetera, worked. Um, but do I think with my talents and my knowledge, could I start a YouTube channel right now and still make it successful? Yeah. Uh, basically, me and Connor are rebuilding my YouTube right now. It's taken off again. We took a couple months off when I was buying a house, and we were mm-hmm. starting this project. So it kind of died, in a sense, because mm-hmm. we took three months off, and it was a slow rebuild, but it's popping again because I basically reinvented it. Mm-hmm. Um, Which I think is part of the, the whole process. For you sure. You have to constantly be thinking about how to reinvent. 1,000%. That's yeah. the biggest thing, which we, we I think we should dig into. And maybe yeah. we, we should have called Bart Quonks. I think he's the best at that, and I'll get into that w- later. Um Instagram, I'll probably say I am 95% lucky. 
I can't say this for a fact, but I feel like I was the first person to put a deadlift video on Instagram. <laughs> he might have been, yeah. I swear. I, I remember the day. It was a Tuesday. Yeah. I'm driving to the gym. I'm about to get a workout in with Fat Daniel. Mm-hmm. And I noticed on my phone, oh my God, they do deadlift. They do videos now. Yeah. And I think I put a block pull on that day. Yeah. Um, so it was a big one. Yeah. I pulled something big. I, and my Instagram took off, obviously, because people weren't doing it. Mm-hmm. If you look at me, I have some muscle. I'm okay strong. I think I have a lot of knowledge. And again, a hair of that Vince Vaughn charisma, 5% maybe. But that doesn't translate to Instagram. You got to be ultra jacked. Mm-hmm. You got to be ultra good looking or be insanely strong. Mm-hmm. And those things translate. So if I started Instagram now, would it be successful? Maybe not. But the other two, I do think. Um, Instagram has gotten harder. It, I think it's a. Uh, I think YouTube's harder, gotten harder too. I think they've gotten harder for the majority. Yeah. Uh, unless you're going all freaking in especially with YouTube. I think you can go all in and I think anyone can, not anyone, maybe anyone can be successful on YouTube if you go all in uh, because you can edit the living crap out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think not everyone can be successful on <clears throat> podcast because like the searchability of a podcast and all that's kind of less. Podcasting has a lot to do with word of mouth um, because you can't search fat loss on iTunes and this pop up. Yeah, um, not yet. No, hopefully one day. Be- believe We believe that's coming. Yeah, and yet. then Instagram, I think... Um, I think is probably even more genetic uh, just because it's so shallow. It's like the shallowest platform ever. And that's why I have a, a lot of hate. I haven't posted a freaking picture in forever. I don't even you know what to do on this silly thing anymore. But uh, that's the point. Yeah. I'm stuck on Instagram at the moment too. I don't, I mean, like I put stuff in story that like yeah, is story. stuff I'm doing, but posting stuff to the feed, it's hard. Cause I don't really, I don't, unless I'm out doing something and even then, and I get uh, bouts of privacy, I guess. Sometimes yeah, yeah. I just don't feel like sharing what I'm doing and it feel, sure. don't feel like it's necessarily anybody else's business and I don't necessarily want to curate my life for Instagram. Yeah. And I understand, and I've never been the biggest fan of the platform because, I mean, let's face it, a big part of social media is figuring out how to sell things and it is shitty to sell things off of Instagram. It's still yeah. possible, yeah. but it is more challenging. Yeah, that was a big podcast I was listening to. I forgot who, but it was another content creator and he was talking about like people can spot a sale now like they'll just scroll right by it and yeah. that's because like the scheme of this thing and i want a huge rant on youtube i think even just today the video came out is like how everyone's faking authentic because the word authentic and genuine are now tied to quote-unquote content creators opposed to actors or athletes yeah right people know that lebron james is getting paid to sell that sprite Five years ago, people didn't necessarily know or care because it actually was authentic mm-hmm. that an Instagram, YouTube, podcast guy were selling you something. But now, you scroll and I, I, I don't want to do it because it'll probably get me sad. I almost want to open my Instagram and first 20 pictures that pop up, I, I bet you 20% or more are ads for something. Um, whether it's another company or that person trying to sell something. And and I'm, I'm guilty of it too. Obviously, you guys know, you know, I coach people. I got to make freaking money. So yes, I promote my products through Instagram. Um, but that's where I'm tied in. Like it used to be kind of a journal you could talk about my lifting and again i, I swear i might might have been the first deadlift video on instagram uh if mr instagram could call me and let me know if that's true or not uh i have the first voiceover fitness video on youtube yeah i believe well, 2010 or something probably no, 2007 yeah youtube started what 2007 or six so like six, five, i believe five, it all six, yeah. it's just like i don't know i don't know where this rant was going but i told you this is how my mind works so <laughs> welcome into the microscope of that but well, we do have questions and so uh if you guys want to follow us uh silent mike on 2ks on instagram and twitter uh the jim mcd on all the social media platforms that i participate yeah on. especially twitter and instagram for us uh and hit us up with questions or when we do ask for questions uh today we're going to cover the podcast uh and starting it up with you guys um and what you asked us and then a, a future episode we're going to talk about um anything so i i reached out said ask us anything and um, we'll give you a little insight into us hopefully some knowledge that we have through training and nutrition in our history um, and then also just uh, be able to communicate and connect with you guys uh, and I, I I can't say it any other way because these words are so tainted now but we <laughs> want to genuinely connect with you guys authentically and be ourselves and help you um, and so that's the best way I've found to do it. Um, something you said about um I don't remember. Here's the thing about podcasting. You can edit an audio podcast if you so choose. So that big gap that yeah, I just true. took right there, you can you can edit that shit. Um, 
Uh, I'm just looking at the questions that came up. Um, a reason that we started the first podcast that we started was that I felt that there was an opportunity to communicate in a longer form than you could with YouTube at the time uh, with an audience. Yeah. And there was value to connecting to that audience. And ultimately, there was commercial value associated with that. And eventually, there got to be ads on that show. And people who participated on that show um, had reaped business rewards, let's say. That'd be, that's the easiest way yeah, for yeah, me yeah. to say it. Uh, if you were thinking about starting a podcast now, ask yourself the question, why are you planning to do it? Are you planning to do it just because you've been told you should do one? Yeah. Or do you really have like a, a passion for going after it week after week after week? In the content business, there's a phrase called feeding the beast. Yeah. And that's a podcast is maybe the biggest one for that because... Maybe because most YouTube videos are are shorter than a podcast is going to be. Yeah. yeah, I would say podcast or Twitch. I think Twitch might be the biggest beast. Maybe so, yeah. So, uh, like if you're trying to start that stupid thing, it's like three hours a day minimum. And yeah. You got to go five days a week minimum. Yeah. And you can't backlog. Right. Ugh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, all of them are a lot, but I, I think Jim hit a huge point there. Um, and I'm, I'm not, when people come for me for favors or whatever, like I'm honest with them, but I'm not like, friends especially or associates or networks or whatever come to me and say hey i want to start a podcast what should i do i don't like go out of my way to like give them a breakdown of these things like they ask me what do i need equipment wise or what do yeah. you think i tell them but like i'm not going out of my way saying like well to be honest what are you going to share i don't think you have anything to share like that's not my place at that point if they were hiring me i'd That'd be, be honest with yeah. them and fix it but yeah. um if, if, if we were being hit up for consulting right. services which to be honest yeah, we I've could probably we, we could potentially offer that i've thought about it a long time we, we don't do that now but we we definitely could yeah um, but but i think you're right like, i've given a lot of advice away for free to to podcasts yeah. some of them lasted not all of them yeah. Most of them didn't. Yeah, because uh, well, that's the other thing is like people always think it's cool and easy, and it's the same as YouTube. Like, there was a break in 2015 where like people started to realize that fitness people in particular, but everyone was making a lot of money on YouTube. Yeah. And so then I was like, oh, I just film myself and put it on here. Like, yeah. And then everyone started a YouTube channel. Like, every, yeah. like every person I knew in Instagram or fitness started a YouTube channel, and very few were either successful or even followed through if they weren't successful. And then even some of the successful ones I know didn't reinvent themselves and just dropped off and, and died, and they just stopped. Right. Uh, because like you said, you really got to feed this beast. But I think it's super important um, you have some kind of direction. Now, do you need like a full show script and do you need like an exact idea or does it have to be that unique of an idea? No, but you have to have confidence enough in yourself or a topic or an idea that you can chase it forever. Like uh, one of the best ones I honestly think, and obviously I'm biased, was my mom. She said, uh, yeah, I think I want to start a podcast. I don't know with who, uh, maybe a YouTube channel. My mom, if you guys want to look back at previous episodes, is a professional olive oil taster and she's like literally one of the best in the world she gets flown to la mm -hmm. and tastes olive oils from all around the world um and that's something again may, i don't know if it's more niche than fitness or not but it's niche mm -hmm. and she's one of the best at it um are we one of the best lifters in the world not necessarily but we've been in the grounds for so long with fitness that that's why we started right we, right. Like, we have this group we've been lifting we know the best lifters in the world we've, we've literally know this thing inside inside and out Let's do this. So if you have something like that, uh, and it can be broad, mm -hmm. uh, you, you could be a mechanic. And, yeah. You know, uh, there's a lot of obviously car guys that love it. And if you have a maybe a unique perspective, skill set, or you have a little bit of the gift of gab, um, you may you may be able to do something really cool and really special. Um, but if you just think it's cool and fun, I'm not going to tell you not to do it. Um, but obviously... To have a successful one, uh, you have to have a little bit more than I think this can make money or I think this would be fun or, yeah. or I want to chat with my friends. You can do that. You can do that. Yeah. You can feel free to do that, uh, but don't necessarily expect that it's going to be so popular that you're going to make money off of it. So you're doing it to, f to feed your own... Right, have perspective on that. Yeah, because exactly. everyone here is Rogan. They're like, oh, well, Rogan just started interviewing his friends. He wasn't yeah. even famous. Like, But he was Joe Rogan when he started. He was semi-famous. <laughs> He had very good network, yeah, uh, and he has a way to interview people where he makes it so conversational, and he has not necessarily the depth of knowledge in so many categories, but he has a broad freaking knowledge base, yeah. so he can talk to a biochemist, and he can talk to a conspiracy guy, and he can talk to a comedian, um, and obviously he's funny himself, uh, so he's he's diverse enough, he can handle these things, and maybe you are that person. Uh, yeah. One, you know, we have thousands of listeners here, one of you probably are that person, yeah. or potentially that person. Potentially, yeah. Um, but... 
again, the sad truth of life is not everybody's that. I'm, I don't have that brain to take us to Mars. I don't have that <laughs> intelligence, and I know who I am. Um, but staying kind of in your lane in that sense, I think, can uh, be, again, quote-unquote, authentic and help the podcast the most. Now, I think that with Rogan, he's driven primarily by his um, curiosity, which is somewhere yeah. we, where we live. Uh, that's part of the DNA of this show is being driven by uh, our own curiosity. Also, I think with Rogan, he enjoys having an intense conversation. He enjoys getting really fucking high and having an intense conversation. Yeah. That's like that's like monetizing being a bro, you know? For sure. Really. For and sure. That's what he's done. He is and a little bit of the voice of the people. Yeah. yeah. I, I heard the other day that he uh, makes $75,000 in ad rev per episode. Not surprised. I believe that that estimate is low based on his numbers that's probably really low he's giving it away um, yeah yeah probably because i've heard other numbers from other people yeah that have less downloads he front loads his ads um he doesn't do them he doesn't do mid rolls in the middle of content the way that most everybody else has to yeah uh so i imagine that probably has something to do with it but um uh it, regardless he's making bank on it and it you know he's monetized his broness his personality his his interest his curiosity all of that and uh, he was a show business figure and, and comedian before he even started. True. Yeah, he had a bunch of talents and experience. Um, Questions? To, yeah, I actually have one more little, yeah, hit up. one more bit. Um, if you're if you're trying to, if you're just thinking about trying trying to start a podcast, think about two things that necess don't necessarily always show up together that you can uh, leverage against each other for uniqueness or creativity or whatever yeah. uh, here's a good example uh that is not this show my friend nick scopoletti uh was involved in a podcast called strength squad for for quite some time he got interested in stand-up comedy he lives in uh connecticut and loved podcasting his podcasting partner for uh strength squad moved to the other side of the country and it became very difficult and he was still driven to to do something so he started a comedy podcast that is stand up comics but primarily guys who are just breaking in so you have stand up comedy and you have novice at stand up comedy yeah. who have like real world jobs right. too little experience yeah so you those are like two things together like regular people and trying to break into comedy. Yeah, yeah. Put those things together, and actually, it's a very good show. And I, as much as I hate to, to uh, just like hand out compliments randomly, but yeah, it's yeah. a really good show. It's yeah. very funny, and it gives you an insight to the world of stand up comedy sure. in you know the small towns of Connecticut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, like, again, I think that's uh, a niche thing. Uh, that attaches to a broad thing. I think that's where we hit, right? Yeah. Everyone kind of understands fitness. Some people like muscles. Some people like health. Uh, and then we're in this weird, deep niche of powerlifting to start right. um, that's expanded, and we kind of go on that. And everyone likes to laugh. Everyone yeah. likes funny shit. Everyone likes a comedy. Uh, and then you have this niche of kind of the business or the up and coming there, uh, and you have kind of a recipe for something good. Um, and there's tons of different formats of podcasts, obviously. Like, I don't know how many of you guys listen to multiple podcasts, but I assume people that listen to one podcast search others. Um, there's like shows types that feel like a tv show uh, yep. highly scripted investigative whatever that are almost more like yep. audiobooks there's obviously casual conversations and then there's somewhere in between which is probably where we lie yeah um and so you, you just got to kind of figure those things out i mean all this a lot of the work that we do in general uh is just lucky for me and unlucky for me is just that brain process of thinking things over how you mm. uh are going to release it what's the best option what are the best titles what's the best uh, angle to come at things uh, and then how to grow and expand yeah exactly so uh on to the questions uh this these are from there are four questions here that are that are uh, pretty encompassing uh from one dark shines uh Number one question, budget-friendly equipment. I pass that all off to, uh, there are a, a few number of free courses that talk about developing equipment for your show for a particular level that yeah. you get into prices and all that sort of stuff. I don't do that. I know how we got I know how we got what we got. But we're not super basic. But we're not super basic. And it's very difficult for me to say, do this cheapest thing. Yeah. There, there are a couple of very good... Um, USB microphones yeah. that are not 
blue yetis. Yeah, and yetis are okay. <laughs> yetis are okay. Yeah, if you can if you can treat your the area around them, yeah. that wouldn't be my first choice yeah. for for anybody. Um, I know some of the basic stuff. I'm not a tech guy, and so take this with a grain of salt. Like Jim said, you could probably just Google it and probably come out with some yeah. really good answers. Yes. Um, but uh, no other podcasts. I mean, Omar had for a while. You know, we did a little Zoom H6 deal, which is a couple yeah. hundred bucks. It's not the cheapest, um, yeah. but it's not the most expensive, and it's basically just a recorder. Uh, you can get one with two, four, or six inputs, I believe, depending on your show setup. It takes a little SD card like a camera. Uh, again, pretty cheap in general. Mm-hmm. And then the microphones, again, that depends on budget, scale, and how serious you're taking this thing. Microphones go from probably five grand each all the way down to 50 to 150 each that, yeah. that are usable and they're doable. Yeah. Um, and, and, and just taking a little bit of time to you know set up a space. Obviously, we have a podcast studio, but we've been doing this for seven years. Uh, you just do it in your kitchen or somewhere super quiet. Yeah. Make sure your dogs aren't barking in the background and just taking little precautions around um, it. But you know, there's YouTube people that are insanely popular that started on their iPhone. And I'm sure there's a podcast out there that started on oh, something yeah, really, really are. shitty and slowly upgraded. So yeah. um, don't necessarily have to go all in, but uh, taking some thought again into the situational help. Probably the cheapest option out there right now is um, Anchor uh, because you can do 100% of it on your phone. You can you can add in a uh, a guest on your phone or whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The quality is not fantastic, but um, maybe good enough to start. Maybe good enough to start. Uh, if 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 you're champing at the bit and you really want to get started, fucking start. Figure out how yeah, to start yeah, and yeah. start. If you're trying to really craft a show, then t- then take more time. Yeah. Um. Uh, I probably had something else there, but that's not all that important. I I can throw some um, some links into the episode notes on this one. Uh, number two, developing focus. And I think we that's something that we've been talking about here a little bit. Um, figuring out where your interests lie and what your what what who you think your audience might be. And let's face it, most of the fitness space is in a particular band of audience. It's, you know, eighteen to thirty four, mostly male. Yeah. Um, women listenership is growing yeah. for in in this segment. Uh, and it might be bigger if you are a lady yourself. It just yeah. tends to be that way. Yeah. If yeah, exactly. If you have if you have something that you can offer um that's unique to a particular group, you should go for it regardless of what what the size of the group is. Yeah. Yeah, I do agree with that 1000%. But again, it's just having like and you don't have to like draw out every single thing. Like I am a blonde guy that only bench presses like you don't need to be insanely specific with what you're getting into and i know those were bad examples right there ignore this <laughs> uh but it, you don't have to be like uh, so specific like i'm a dad with two kids that bench presses on the weekends and they have a good idea of what's going on but you don't have to define yourself like you're you know doing a definition in the webster just have a good idea of what you're doing and again uh, all those are going to evolve uh, and kind of move along as you do and as you learn because like you're going to suck um i actually think i wanted this is part of my thousand thought process on the drive down here i was like oh i'm going to tell them they're going to suck and they're going to work at it and it's going to get better but i was like actually looking back at like our first 10 podcasts i think we crushed those like i probably talked a little too much because i was nervous like the very first we've ever done together yeah uh, i was like maybe i talked too much because i was nervous jim probably didn't talk enough because he was uh messing with the tech yep uh and then our guests probably didn't sound great but i was like we actually kind of crushed those some of those were actually pretty good content uh, as far as i remember seven years ago i don't listen to myself no it's it, that's exactly true yeah but exactly other true. than we, that we, pretty we had good. a little bit of a lightning in a bottle situation yeah wit and i not to break my arm patting myself on the back but i knew that going in yeah it was just a confirmation when it actually happened i knew based on conversations that the the three of us who were on that show together had yeah. i knew what it could be like and it it, it worked and it some reason worked. it was casual and i felt more comfortable because my first youtube video did suck and that is common case for a lot of people jim interviewed me for a youtube video whatever eight years ago and i probably f- it was like froze and weird and i didn't explain anything i just said like one word answers and it was awkward uh <laughs> but I've, I, I and i've never been on a microphone it's not like a microphone is more comfortable but cameras can make you weird yeah microphones could probably make some people weird yeah uh, it is all an evolution uh, and that's kind of cool part of telling the story and again not being um, you know, a newscaster and being so robotic, reading a script. Uh, yeah. Part of it is is actually the authenticity that comes with you messing up. Yep. Uh, how to get guests that will draw listeners? <clears throat> I'm going to just kind of debunk this one a little yeah. bit because you can have a giant guest and not get any listenership out of it if they're not if there's somebody that 
your audience doesn't really give that big of a shit about. Yeah, or if they suck as a guest. Or don't if they think, suck as a guest. Yeah, which a lot other. of times happen. You get a big old, someone with a million Instagram followers like, oh, I'm going to shout it out and I'm going to get all these people. Like, if they suck at talking or the content sucks. Like, content has to be number one. Like, yeah. if you're giving enough info or, or sharing Or you catch enough, them on a bad day. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure I've done a shitty podcast because I was grumpy or anxious or whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't, yeah, it's tough. But, you know, I'm thinking about, again, because some of that is the luck that we got um, in the storm we caused on fitness podcast and YouTube and Instagram all at the same time to yeah. allow to grow an audience because iTunes uh, and Spotify and the major platforms aren't very searchable. So if they're searching a guest name, sometimes it'll pop up on your sh- episode. Uh-huh. Sometimes it won't. And if they're popping up a category, it, it, it's not great. So you may have to just grind it out. And I know that sounds typical business guru but you may just have to put out an episode a week for a, a year before you even reach a hundred mm-hmm. listeners but mm-hmm. um, eventually maybe one of those links gets popped in a reddit you get a little traction perhaps you know you do get a uh, someone with a big podcast or youtube following uh, that shouts you out and you get a little bit of traction but uh it's not necessarily a linear snowball effect um but if you don't put out the content, now you have no chance for the snowball. Right. Um, and so that's something I talk about with everything, kind of sacrificing for the unknown. You kind of have to do all these things we're talking about even in order to have a chance. Mm-hmm. We can't build you a recipe and then you have a nice chocolate cake. It doesn't work that way in business and definitely not in content creating. Right. You have to do these things and maybe a cake appears and maybe a cake does not appear. And any guest you get is going to a- appeal to a certain percentage of your your audience, but maybe not a hundred percent of it. Your hope in bringing on a guest is that you pull a little of that person's audience toward you yep. and that they like what they, what they see. And some percentage going to be small percentage sticks around. That's, that's just the formula of collaboration. Yeah, for sure. Uh, any podcast in which you have a, have a guest is essentially a collaboration. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of the times we deal with people though, who may not be, um, uh, promoting themselves on that level, but you know the Something. way you the way you would see a YouTube collab was a couple people who were you know yeah, which even those are slowly dying suddenly. Yeah, um, but I I just I think that you can't. I, what was I going to say? Behind the scenes of this show, I will tell you that this show's listenership by episode varies more by topic, by question yeah. than it does by. Uh, our guest expert. Yeah, and I think uh, the conversations Jim and I have are um, leading with our question. What's a good question? Or um, leading with a guest. I think it is okay to lead with a guest, but we're not basing our guests off their popularity. Uh, I'm not going to say it's not a factor. Obviously, if they have a following, it doesn't hurt. Right. Um, but number one is, uh, would they be a good interview? Are they? Or number one is, are they knowledgeable in the topic we want uh, or the question we want? Mm-hmm. Or are they knowledgeable in something? Yeah. Secondly, uh, how are they speaking have we talked to them in person have we watched their videos or podcasts are they going to be able to be compatible with our personalities and the topics at hand and make it an entertaining fashion Uh, and then maybe three is is following or something like that right if we have two candidates that both are very knowledgeable on broccoli and they both speak very good about broccoli but one has a hundred thousand followers and one has fifty thousand yeah we might choose the one with a hundred thousand but that's just um again kind of the last factor because i think the title uh, the content itself getting them to fit our program kind of is important. Um, And then maybe the following. The next one is effective ways to prep for a podcast. I'm I'm assuming this means like podcast episode and how long we typically spend per episode. And I will say this, uh, the, this show was designed for us not to do that level of prep. Um, What we do prep on is uh, the development of questions and, uh, yeah, and the the guest expert. Yeah, or like the little things in between the the posting on my Facebook, posting on my Instagram, yeah. like some of the busy work that takes some. How am I going to when and how am I going to post these things? Right. Um, we we yeah. don't um, on this show. We do not spend a lot of time delving into the background of our experts. Yeah, all that's fairly well documented. Nobody needs to hear it again and again and again. That was one of the considerations going in that we did not do. This is not an interview show. Yeah. Um, we've done an interview show. A lot of people do interview shows. They're everywhere. You can't swing a dead cat without hitting one. Yeah, once you watch one hero movie and you know the hero or you don't and you yeah. see one, uh, how they get their origin power story, you're kind of yeah. over it. Yeah. Like, I, that's cool. I, uh, I just watched Aquaman and the whole thing is an origin story. I'm like, that's fine, but I'd rather, like, have, like, a different story. Yeah. Like, If a piece of their background fits into sure. how they answer the question, 
sure. we're totally about it. But I, I don't need to know, how did you get into fitness? Yeah. I never need to hear that again from anybody because um, – I, uh, number one, I've probably heard it. Number two, I don't care. So. Yeah, and it, 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 again, it depends on the show, how much research you're doing. If you're presenting every show and that's your job, is right. you're a tech guy and now you're doing a review on different TVs and products every episode, yeah. you're probably going to have to do a good amount of research to compare one keyboard to the other. Yeah. Um, for ours, obviously, the goal is to have our history and knowledge kind of flub up a little bit in the beginning and then we bring on a pro at the end. Mm -hmm. um, this one is slightly different. Like I said, I did 15 minutes of brain research on the way down here on how I was going to answer it. Um, but again, other podcasts we've had, we've had a couple interviews that were more serious or with guests that I didn't know. And uh, I'd say I probably took spread out three hours. I probably took an hour uh, a week early, um, mm -hmm. really, really dug into some info. And then I probably took an hour or two to refresh myself the night before the interview uh, on some topics or things to be questions I wanted to have. I've never really taken notes, but I'm not a note guy. I think it, it depends on your workflow. Jim's a little bit more of a, note, a note guy. guy yeah, yeah. So if you want to take notes on that. Um, I can totally lose them, but writing yeah, them down yeah, is Yeah. The, something that helps. Yeah. And so you're, you're going to find your own workflow, but uh, I think that question's highly dependent on the type of show you have um it's similar to it is similar to kind of a news show or something you know like how long does an anchor do uh, research on each topic they're about to present or news story that night maybe half an hour each or something who knows or it could be it could be a lot there there was a time when they wrote all their own copy now they pretty yeah, much yeah. read copy so yeah. it, 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 it yeah it all it depends, depends but it depends on your topic um i think that if you're going to uh, really enjoy your topic. Obviously, hopefully you're going to, or your show, you're going to have to, you're going to be more excited to do more of that research. But I think if you're going to whip out an episode a week um, for, you know, in, in your mindset to have a successful podcast, you got to be thinking the next five years, you're going to do an episode a week. You want to find a workflow that works for you. And it, you can't be researching 10 hours a no, week and no. whipping one out. No, I will say um, that probably one of the fastest growing fitness podcasts right now is Greg Knuckles podcast. And, Greg doesn't do anything without putting a, a shit ton of research yeah. into it. But that's like his number one like passion, I think, yeah. in his job and what he's best yeah. at. Yeah. So it's working right now sure. in a way that I wouldn't have guessed that it would. For sure. I don't know who's listening to his show. Yeah. I don't know if we share listeners or not. Yeah, but he's to be a honest with you, crazy because, intelligent guy. Because because we're not trying to go deep, deep, deep into things. We're literally the purpose of the show is is to create a resource for people who want an answer to a specific question on a specific topic and don't want to have to dig through a two and a half hour show of somebody else's to get to that thing. Yeah, uh, entertaining applicable information right. to have a good understanding. Right. Not, not, you're not going to write a book after our... And, and uh, the fact that we do the, the portion with, with just ourselves and then the expert shows something of how a perception of a fact and an actual fact... Uh, line up to each other and and sometimes not great we're the, the topics that we've dealt with so far mostly have been ones that we were not completely in the dark about but we necessarily understand yeah. why things work the way they worked once we start digging into some weird topics i think a relationship <clears throat> one would be a good next one uh yeah we might, yeah. Be, we might be clueless we pot potentially yeah uh next one came from our good friend brandon camel diamond who just recently had a Never heard second of kid uh, differentiating your offering when the barrier to entry is so low. And that's also true of YouTube. It's maybe more true of YouTube because yeah. uh, you can start a YouTube channel just with your um, just with your iPhone or, or any kind of phone and you put it on there. It doesn't cost you anything. In, in general, like bigger podcasts are hosted on paid platforms. Um, so there's some effort has to go go into that you have to put effort into actually getting on apple podcasts yeah there's a there's a reasonable amount of effort the lowest barrier to entry is definitely youtube in my mind um, yeah or instagram if you want instagram yeah, yeah. yeah same shit. um yeah, I don't know how you differentiate yourself. You know, we talked about that a little bit, having a clear vision of what you offer and what you don't. I think it's everything that we said yeah. and being able to to um to look at the market of what's available 
and say what isn't being offered. Yeah, that, that I that I that, can gap. Yeah, that yeah. I can do and that somebody might be interested in. Yeah, and to shout out Brandon uh, himself, if you guys haven't, check out his YouTube. But, you know, he started with, I think, kind of gym vlogs uh, years ago. He yeah. was a very original YouTuber, maybe 2010 or 11, kind of gym vlogs. And then I think he kind of stretched into the instructional space a little bit. He would try to teach you guys. He would do some reviews here mm-hmm. and there. Um, and then talk about reinventing yourself. And this is a second very very part time gig for him uh, is now he basically reviews things he talks about gym setups and gym equipment and different things of that nature but he's basically turned into a, a, a reviewer on YouTube and he does uh, a pretty damn good in depth uh, job of it for him you know this being very very part time him having a full family and a job and travel um, but again it kind of ties he, he's a good tie in of everything we talked about having a niche uh, he loves lifting weights he's uh-huh. very knowledgeable in it is he the world's best expert maybe not but he's very knowledgeable in the subject uh, and then because there's so many other gym vlogs and he's probably <laughs> feels similar to me we're like all right we're like we're a little bit older now for youtube <laughs> we're not the most jacked we look like we yeah. lift uh, and we're not the strongest me and brandon are actually very uh, uh similar in a lot of ways mm-hmm. we don't want to do the gimmicks neither of us want to light our hair on fire and squat 405 mm-hmm. what do we do now uh and me i relied on what i do best coaching and that's kind of where i've gone back to and he probably relied on something that he's very interested in which is gym equipment building his home gym uh and having solid reviews of of what's good and not and being honest yeah he's also spectacular on camera yeah he's very good speaking. he's so good and i think that he actually might his real world world job um relates to that somehow i know he does um uh, training, maybe like soft skills, training yeah, around presentations, of presentation, that kind of thing. So he's really, really good. There are very few people who can, without an edit, just talk to the camera for as long as Brandon does. Yeah, he's good. God bless him for that um, talent. I do not possess it. If if I have the ability to edit, I'm going to fucking edit so I don't sound like an idiot. <laughs> I may be cutting some of this out. Well, <laughs> highly edited. Highly edited. Uh, and I will say that like when we first started this show, I did more editing because I was trying to um, I was trying to define what the show was sure. was like, and as we have gotten um, more familiar with what what we're doing, what we're trying to do, or whatever, and re- reestablishing our on yeah. online relationship here, it just uh, flows. It flows. Yeah, it's pretty pretty easy. Uh, is there a preferred ratio of this? Is Tom a nurse lifting who uh, is a devotee of our friend Jacob Ross? He I think uh, Jacob programs for him. Uh, is there a preferred ratio of shooting the shit for fun or speaking off the cup uh, versus having a, a discussion topic prepared? Preferred like what we enjoy or you think for the audit? <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know. Uh, um, yeah, because I think on my thought is you had you, again you have to enjoy what you're doing and you have to think it's giving value of some nature. Uh, you have to believe in what you're doing and believe in yourself. Um, for us, we, you know, Jim this is Jim's brainchild for this whole show. And I think he kind of broke it down to me percentage wise, if not how he talked to me, broke it down percentage wise in my head. And he said, you know, yeah. it's 10 to 10 to 20% BS, another 20 to 30% of him and I trying to answer in a question mm. and then 50% of a pro answering the question. Um, and I don't know if that happened naturally or if Jim had that in mind and it turned that way. Um, but I think it depends on the podcast. It depends on what your gifts are. If you yeah. are a Joe Rogan or, you know, these Vince Vaughn guys and you can just rattle off and be hilarious or even H3H3, he has a really good podcast out there or Bobby Lee stuff like that mm-hmm. and maybe they have some topics based on their de- guests coming in or they have some general ideas that what they're going to talk about Jim's on tour with his band okay we'll talk about that yeah. but otherwise they're just off the cuff being funny being themselves and if you have that gift shit then it's 100% it seems like um, but if you don't um, or maybe that's not your number one gift and your number one gift is doing research and investigations then maybe you have a highly more highly edited show mm-hmm. uh, you got to play to your strengths and you're more reporting uh, on whatever topic or or whatever your podcast turns into and if you were um, if you're someone who's done a lot of research on a guest um, uh, it's maybe easier to bullshit with them um, potentially uh, a th- what was I going to say? I completely lost it. So we're, we'll we'll move on then. Um, oh, I know what I was going to say. There are two camps about about being a, BSing on podcasts, particularly at the beginning. Uh, one of them is do it because uh, that's why we're here. Everything else is like all the information that we gain is gravy. We're looking for um, a conversation between like friendly people yeah. with each other. Make time it, fly a little faster. Yeah, exactly. That's what we're, we're looking for, you know, some kind of connection to the hosts. 
uh, an observation of the connection between the hosts, a feeling of you know, like hanging out. And that's what they're looking for. Other people really want you to cut to the chase. Yeah. And so they don't want any of that. I, I, sometimes we have episodes where we don't have anything uh, to preamble with. We don't have anything to BS. Yeah. So we'll kind of get right into the topic. But our discussion of the topic, topic is a little fluffier than if we've, if we've BSed for five minutes or seven minutes or yeah. t- even 10 minutes, whatever. Yeah, it's weird because we've done so many different types of shows and so for so many years that uh, I think Jim's right. I think there's just kind of two camps out there and what they expect or what they're listening to you for. And I don't think you can really niche it in. Obviously, if you're a full um, you know, BS show and you're just talking the whole time, yeah. or if you're a full like research or educational podcast, your audience most likely will be that. But if you're any mix of the two, um, you're always going to, there's always going to be critics and there's always going to be someone that loves it and there's always going to be someone that hates it. So again, yep. just kind of rely on what your vision is and uh, what you possibly do best. Like you, if, you, if you suck at telling stories and you're not funny, <laughs> don't do that. You got to be self-aware enough. Yeah, yeah. Then maybe your BS is 5%. Yeah. Maybe you just tell one story of your dog peeing on your right. bed or something and then you go right into your show uh, to have a little bit of human interconnection there. But otherwise, um, yeah, you, you, you'll, you'll feel it out. Uh, this is a pretty good one that I don't have a great answer for. How do you draw initial listeners without a pre-existing following? Same with YouTube. I have uh, issues uh, now that you said like, oh, I don't really have a good answer for that. I have an issue as I always find an answer. And and I think that's <laughs> why this show is what it is. Yeah, I always like, like if that's someone- That's why we get to 50% facts. I, I want to help people. Yeah. So if you, and if not, like I'll, again, my brain this whole time, as I talked about in the beginning, is it's chugging at ludicrous speed. So like I can come up with a pretty good answer quick, even if I don't have an answer. Mm-hmm. And, and, and other people, at least from my perception, other people are like, yeah, that makes sense. Mike knows what he's talking about. And I don't know if I do or not, but my- brain's chugging um truth is is uh which jim already talked about uh having content on different platforms so if you yeah. if you're just starting a podcast you have no following anywhere and you only rely on putting it on itunes and just pray it's not going to work um you have to rely on on the connections you do have maybe you have 500 family members on facebook mm. uh, maybe you have an instagram with 200 high school friends mm-hmm. uh, maybe you have a twitter with five followers doesn't really matter take that content in some nature or promotion of it in some nature hopefully entertaining itself uh, and start to disperse that through all your channels um, and, and again I, I think podcast is one of the most difficult because there's no real search engine right now yeah uh, but you could turn it into a blog you make a website turn it into a blog now it's slightly more searchable on Google mm-hmm. you turn it into a YouTube video with the title and description now it's slightly more searchable on Google and YouTube, um, and then it's just a, a waiting game, a patience game, and a, and a grind game. I think, too, that just in terms of developing a, a social following, period, um, you have to put some time into that, getting started. You have to um, seek out other people on the platforms that you use and see what content they produce and what you and comment to them what you appreciate about it. And at least you'll be seen by that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you may be seen by other people who follow them. For sure. And you may pick up followers from that. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's a gamble, but it's it's a safe gamble. Yeah, yeah. If you're being authentic about it. And same with the the dispersing it on other platforms. Like it's all like, is it going to work? I don't know. But like, if you're not doing that, you're not doing everything you can. Right. And if you're not doing it consistently, you're not doing everything you can. Right. And that's like for this show, we have not been aggressive about video, even though we both come from uh, originally from the YouTube world. We're we're working on fixing that, changing yeah. that. But it it really is an issue of of how the show flows, and we don't typically have. Um, we don't have guests in studio that often. Right. And so how does that video feel? How does the back half of that video feel when the expert's on the phone? So we're working on that in a way that I think will be uh, more engaging than uh, it would be if we're just looking at us there are while we listen picture. to other people. Yeah. Um, that actually, that question was from John's lifting stuff. And uh, uh, how do you reach out to a guest and successfully book them? The answer to that question is that you reach out to them. Period. That's yeah. if you don't if you don't ask, there's no way you're going to get it. Yep. Um, Be as professional as you can. I suggest emails uh, because it is kind of a business transaction now. I'll obviously 
answer DMs and I've been on tons of podcasts of people reaching out. But like how you do it does matter. Speak like a human, but speak professionally. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the, the truth is, is obviously kind of like there are some rankings, like whether we want to admit that or not. If you have 5,000 followers on Instagram and you reach out to The Rock, Dwayne Johnson with yeah. 70 million. Yeah it's less likely. But if you're reaching out to someone with 20,000 followers and you have 5,000, uh, you have a little bit more likely chance. Your same similar thing with the iTunes rankings. Hey, I uh, saw your podcast. I've listened to it for a while. You're about 10 spots above me on iTunes. I would love to collaborate, mm-hmm. something of that nature. Um, and then, again, I think there's a fine line of being actually genuine and then faking genuine. I've, I have kind of say yes to any podcast that wants to have me on. But there's a lot of people that I could just tell are fake, genuine, uh, and that is a big pet peeve of mine. And maybe other people don't care or <laughs> see through it, uh, and they just play this whole business, fake business game. But there's a reason I work for myself and for this type of content is to have real connection and real conversation yeah. and to get rid of the corporate fake vibe, like playing golf with people you don't want to just because you have a meeting the next day. I don't want to do any of that. Yeah, um, so if you can just be as real as you can uh, while still being uh, you know, a hair of professional. We do work for ourselves and everyone that kind of works in the space tends to be a little bit more free thinking, I think, than kind of stuck in the, the hamster wheel. But um, there is something for kind of the pleases and, and thank yous along the way. Looking for a couple of just wrap up questions here. We obviously cannot answer everything. It's just not possible. Um, uh, and we, we can't we can't build the whole thing for you. You need to do research uh, for yourself as well. Yeah. I can't, we can't spoon feed you the whole uh, nine yards. Um, uh, and, and, and you'll learn along the way. Part of that's part of the value. Of yeah. Knowing where you fit in or what you like to do. Or, you know, Rogan probably didn't think, oh, my YouTube will take off. This is an audio thing, but his did. So then you just run with that. Uh, this is a this is a technical question that I'll answer. Basic process for, this is from Ian Withrow, uh, basic process to production to release of a podcast. Do you use the audio from the video or record audio separately? We record audio separately, and audio is, is primary, as, we were, as I was just saying about video. Um, the board audio goes directly into a camera and ultimately that will be the, the audio version, the, uh, I mean the, the audio of the video version, the video version is not as, we don't comb through the, the audio of the video version to the extent that I do with the audio version. Um, there are some specific reasons why that is the case, but if you are just listening and you have no visual input from the person that you're listening to, you listen differently. That's that's the basis of it. You listen differently than if you're watching something or yeah, for sure. you're consuming it off of YouTube. Um, how do you fund it? Uh, you do it as cheaply as possible until you can make some money off of it. Um, yeah, obviously advertising, merchandise, depending on yeah. what you do. That's all like a whole <clears throat> other business plan. Creating a podcast is one thing. Creating a podcast that makes money is a different thing. It's a different thing. Yeah. And there are people out there that will that can tell you how to do that and they largely tell you to do it for free. The biggest thing is if you already have a product that you are trying to sell, yeah. then being your own sponsor is your best call because you can do that from the beginning. You're programming, um, you're programming content that helps people want to buy your product. And, uh, and yeah, not, have it related. Yeah, not in a fake way, but in a, this is me and this is my product and not constantly overselling. There's a, there's a touch point in there somewhere where people want to buy things from you because they like you. That's a, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, you need to be developing that if, if that's your plan. Um, but yeah, it, you can get to a point. There are there are platforms that do uh, what they call uh, uh, dynamic ad insertion that will give you uh, results mm, similar to a low level YouTube. Maybe it's not a lot of money, but it might be. You know, beer money or coffee yeah. money or whatever. Um, you don't start this thing as a career. Yeah, don't expect that it's going to be a career because this yeah. is not going to happen. Yeah, you can have that as a goal and keep plowing away. Uh, and, and by the time you're ready to monetize this thing, you'll probably have the knowledge on how to monetize this thing. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Strong Bear. How well, we are looking for new sponsors if you guys want. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know somebody who wants to sell something, um, we're, we're down if it's something that we like. Uh, is it necessary to be part of a podcast network? I don't know because we haven't ever been. So that's a thing. No, not necessary. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, I don't have any great um, insight on that. I've always wanted to do a podcast network. It is not easy. And I and I was talking to somebody who was part of a network that fell apart. And the guy, the guy who was working on it, like it, it was, 
it, it became an obsession and it still fell apart. And uh, I commented, well, you know, it's difficult enough to actually do, um, you know, promo trades with other podcasts. It is, it's difficult enough to coordinate that, let alone trying to do a network. Yeah. And, and he, this was a, somebody who's been podcasting longer than me he said, yep, that's actually absolutely correct. Uh, I don't track guests. I feel like we did that already. I mean, the more the more consistency you have, um, the easier it is to get guests. I think that's yeah, that's a big yeah, thing. and just build routine for everything you do. You know, build routine for your own personal mind, how to get ready to podcast. Build a routine on what you do with the tech to set it up. Build a routine with how you release it, whether that's Facebook, Instagram, whatever, in order. Um, build a routine on how uh, and when you schedule guests. Is it one week out, two weeks out, a month out? Um, the more routine you can build, the more consistent you, consistency, like Jim said, you can build, uh, the more success I think you'll have. Uh, that might be good enough. What's our time? Uh, I die. Lost track of what our time was. Uh, this is just kind of it's a couple a couple things that are, that kind of go together. One of them is like, how do you choose a good partner to do a podcast with? And you you have to have like d- decent conversational chemistry with somebody, or you it's not going to work. That's, yeah, and I don't know if you necessarily know. Yeah, right? because you, like you could have like you could be at a bar drinking beers with somebody and have the best conversation ever. Yeah, uh, and then you guys get in front of a microphone and one person freezes up and can't get over it. Yeah, um, I think obviously if you have some kind of background in video or audio or something, that's going to help both of you. But uh, and you don't necessarily need a guest host or two hosts or something either. Uh, some people have done great things with four. Some people have done great things with one. Uh, yeah, kind of depends on your show. But I don't know how you choose to be honest. Again, some of our stuff was a little bit of luck, and the rest of it that wasn't luck was Jim's thought process. So I don't know. <laughs> I I'll I'll own that. Um, I was handpicked talent. Handpicked talent. Yeah, no, I chose my team. And um, uh, this sort of feeds into uh, the question uh, that also came from Dr. Strong Bear, which is uh, exit strategy, like when to move on. Yeah, I think that's a, a multi-layered. I think it depends on... Um, I don't know if you necessarily... I actually read a cool quote from Will Smith um, that he never focused on a, a plan B or never built a plan B because I was yeah. taking energy away from his plan A. Yeah. Um, so in terms of like building a podcast and when to end the show, you know, I think every TV show or movie out there, you always want it to go as long as it can right. be successful. You don't ever make... They didn't make Fast and Furious 1 not praying for Fast and Furious 18 or whatever we're on. Did they know that's going to happen? No. Right. Um, but obviously it was probably a hope of some nature. Um, two, I think the exit strategy uh, business-wise or for your own path, I don't know if you can necessarily plan either. Um, I was doing a big Q&A on Instagram recently and someone asked me what the best decision was that I ever made. And I don't have one best decision, but I made a conscious choice in my mind uh, probably two or three years ago that every choice I'm going to make uh, was going to be for me and what I wanted and what I felt at that moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a very logical thinker, and again, I'm an overthinker. So you get real logical and overthink, and you you, you get stuck a lot. Um, I'm also just an uh, anxious guy, so sometimes I would sit around, and, and I would like to consider I'm a nice guy, but sometimes I'm a pushover. So you just kind of sit there. Um, but I think if you're doing things that actually make you happy, Uh, and make those choices every day based on that, Mm -hmm. your happiness or what fulfills you or what makes you even content, what makes you live okay. Um, I just don't think you can plan those things. It's not necessarily a business side you might be able to do, right? I'm going to build up this keyboard company um, and we're going to sell it in five years. That's our goal. Mm -hmm. Um, And you can have exit strategies like that. Or I want to do this for three years and stop. And you can do that with podcasting. Yeah. Uh, Chances of success, I think, are less. Uh, And then what do you do from there if you don't enjoy it? But I think focusing, number one, on what you enjoy, what fulfills you, uh, what allows your day-to-day to to be slightly better every single day is going to be number one. Um, And those choices may switch. They may change. You may have to make one every single day. Uh, You may have to U-turn. There may be tons of, uh, you know, turns in the road. Um, But I don't think you can ever plan stuff like that. No, I don't. I think it's very difficult. Um, I think that... Uh, having good chemistry when you go in, having a good idea of how frequently you can actually produce the content and then producing it on that schedule. You may not be able to do every week, so don't do every week. Do every other week. Do once a month, whatever, uh, that you can do consistently. That's that's huge. It's a must. At the point that you stop being able to do it consistently and fun, you should, you could, should consider stopping. Um the original podcast that we were involved with Mike left at some point 
I uh, eventually uh, I hung in for a while for a number of reasons, some of them financial, uh, some of them based around uh, upcoming guests that I was interested in and excited by. Uh, that the the focus of my other co-host was changing at that point. Uh, the business relationship was n- not established the way it should have been from the beginning. And I think that affected uh, both of us here. Uh, and it, it just, it became uncontrollable, I guess. Yeah, and, and everything's a learning. Uh, yeah. It, it sucks in the time and it sounds so guru, like there's no failure, just learn, learn mistakes yeah. or something like that. It's fucking great until you feel like your head got stomped in. But um, I think if you continue to make those choices to find your happiness, like you yeah. said, you, you weren't in the spot anymore you wanted to be. Yeah. So you made it, a choice against it and uh, you yeah. continue to follow that. And it doesn't mean you make one choice and then everything's fucking awesome and happy again. Right. Um, but if you continue to make those choices, continue to focus on that decision uh, and chase down what, what, what you need uh, for your every day, I think eventually the exit strategy uh, it doesn't become an exit strategy. It just morphs into what's next. Yeah, exactly. What's next. Yeah. When I reach the point of saying, I I can't keep going the direction that, that this is going both content wise and business wise was really mostly to say, look, we need to get th- back on this track. And when that was not possible, um, the other person walked away and yeah. it was done. That was, that's when I knew it was over when the other person walked away. So, um, uh, that's why uh, reteaming with Mike wa- has been very rewarding because we are very much on the same page, and but we also have our own perspectives, and uh, that's why I think we can keep going this going with this for a long time. There was this show uh, was carefully crafted before we started as to be something that we could continue to do, um, kind of regardless of what else we had going on in our lives, um, which is I think an important consideration that people should make. Um, we, you know, had conversations going into it about what we wanted to get out of it and how it was going to look and all that stuff. And, uh, I think that I highly encourage anyone who is working with somebody else to have those conversations as well Yeah. before they get started. And don't be afraid to say no. I know it sucks cause I was the guy in 2010 or 11, I started my own gym and every book you read on business or life guru bullshits telling you to say yes and find opportunity. And yeah. I think you do need to say yes to find opportunity. Um, but after you say yes and find that opportunity, it's okay to say no after. Again, it's okay to change those choices after. Right. And there's been many business deals I've been on even in the last two years uh, that got pretty far. And then it's just like, nah, I don't think this is for me. The, these hiccups are in the way. You can't get over those hiccups. Best we go our separate ways. And that's okay. Um, and that, that could be content wise business wise yeah uh maybe who knows what happens in the next three years and me and jim just don't talk well anymore on on camera or off so then we stop you know like things happen in life and that's totally okay uh i think that's probably uh common knowledge obviously and probably happens in the corporate world as well yeah um and that's why people obviously tend to hate their jobs because they're not working with people they choose to (laughs) exactly Um, but that's beside a a different point but just don't be afraid uh to take opportunities and also don't be afraid to kind of turn them down if if it's not a right fit uh you can always kind of morph that or do it on your own is the truth yep all right, I think that that's uh, as much as we're going to be we're going to be able to give you today. So, um, follow us on Instagram. I'm going to put up another post soon. I don't know if it's too late or not, but we're going to try to do these uh, a couple times, maybe a month or even a year, just me and Jim, Q&As, or tackle topics that we're real confident in uh, or things that we've already accomplished. So uh, appreciate you guys for hanging in. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, hit us up on social media if you did. Silent Mike, DJ McD, Twitter, Instagram, all those things. And follow the show on Instagram and Twitter. 50% facts, where percent is a word, and we will catch you next time. Thanks for listening.